Hello everyone and welcome to Administrator Studios. Welcome back and let's continue and complete this series now. So in this video, what are we going to do is we are going to move everything from here and that is the static file. We are going to move it to our database and we'll deploy our API. So before we do anything, let's go to our API page. Okay. So here is the link. I will add this to the description. You can refer to it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to download this API and install it on our local server 127.0.0.1. Okay. So this is a very good API, very simple to use a single page API. So this is just good enough for us to look at and understand what APIs are. APIs are pretty much a single or multiple files residing on a server and that let you interact with the server and give you responses in a standard format. We call it REST APIs, REST format. And there are so several different ways to interact. Okay. So let's see what is supports. So if you go through the documents, you see there is a admin panel also available which you can download and install and probably manage all your uh, database uh, objects and things manually you can do it graphically and then uh, this is there are steps mentioned on how you can utilize how you can run this local server and see there are some configuration settings so you can go in detail so I'll just keep it simple I am going to go here in source no not in source I will go to this root here is the crude API and thank you to the developer to provide us this API and go to releases and you can pretty much download any release so you can download this latest one uh, once you have downloaded you will find a file called api.php so next we have to do is this is my root folder of my http server xamp is installed on my system so in the xamp we'll go to htdocs and there i've created a folder called api so whatever apis we are creating for this project we are keeping it at one place so within that api i have copied that file api.php here is this file api.php okay so now we'll have to configure this so let me open this in an editor here is the api file api.php so in general basically you would need a driver name by default you can pick mysql if you don't specify it will take default as mysql address or our database server address which is localhost my username now this is the uh, database server username and the password and the name of the database that we have created so let's see if we have these things in place already so if you have SEMP installed ensure that you have started Apache and MySQL thereafter go to localhost okay PHP my admin gets default I mean get comes default along with XAMPP so let me first uh, login using root okay so we have a database created with the name website so this is a blank database there is nothing inside this database as of now and if you look at we've created a user account just for this purpose and name the user account is web admin i know i i and i hope that you guys know how to create a user account and associate that account with the database it is very easy try it all by yourself here in the graphical environment you can easily do that okay and in case you find it difficulty if you find it difficult do let me know in the comment channel probably post a video around this okay so I'm skipping those steps I've... and even you can use root if you want to but I would not suggest that let's practice what is 
what happens in practicality so when you do it practically you generally will use a separate username which is have the least privileges to do the job so that's a different concept altogether so web admin is our username website is our database okay and let me show you that database also okay let's go to the databases so in this list of databases you see I have this you uh, selected as UTF 8 MB 4 so UTF 8 MB 4 is actually UTF based database that means it will actually support a very wide range of uh, uh, what do we call characters but at the same time this four number four here signifies that it can even support large uh, emoticons so there are emoticons which do not use three but four binary representations so for that to accommodate that we have used it this way because generally when you put posting something on blogs as comments the chances are that you are going to post emoticons and at times I have seen that this gives little problem so it's better we do it from the beginning okay so our database is set but it is not yet populated so let's create some tables inside this database so how would we create this table let me show you so if I'll go back to my code these are actually the tables which we need users pages okay then we have features images menu post companies feedbacks so we are going to move everything from here to our database and this is going to be our table name but you need to understand the difference so so far what we were using is the JSON format so JSON format has a very uh, has flexibility to represent data in different manners you can have uh, uh, multiple level of uh, embedding integration within the data okay but unlike uh, a regular RDMS database like MySQL you have to have a tabular structure wherein everything is there in a form of a table that also requires you to have the same number of columns you cannot have a different record in a different column so for example if we uh, are, if we go by the pages if we click here just hover our mouse you will see the definition so this is the definition we are looking for so what we need to do is we need to copy this definition okay just copy this definition onto a different page do it for all the things now here you see here we have copyrighted text but here we are only using heading here we have tagline the tagline is there in probably most of the sections but it's not here it's not here so that means our structure for each section is different which is a very flexible thing to do such a structure is directly supported in databases like mongodb which we are going to cover next so after this we are going to cover prepare a, a api that we are going to design our own api we are not going to rely on our, on ready-made api but we are going to prepare our own api and then use that API to interact with our application in that case we will easily be able to use everything as it is we will not have to modify most of it would go directly but here we will have to think about it and give and see what would be my final structure so what I did I've already prepared I done my homework what I did already I copied all these structures for example for features okay when I hover on to it this is the structure so I've copied this copied this all at one place in the editor here it is okay 
pages, websites, plans, feedbacks, companies, menu. Now I need to convert into statements that we can use on a MySQL database. So generally if you look at it, everything that we call a string here is nothing but text in SQL when we specify. Similarly, number can be int, big int or any integer value or so that's what we are using and then these are the primarily two things there is nothing else we are not specifying date though date is there publishing date we can we could have specified so finally after working on it I have transformed everything into a single file wherein we can run this SQL commands directly on a console and be able to generate our table okay so here the name of the table which I have specified is PHP crude API so let me change this to website and because we already have a, a database called website we don't have to create this again okay I'm going to replace this with website okay so this is done so this replace feature which is is a very very uh, very very helpful feature you can use control H specify what you want to change and replace character uh, string whatever you want to replace with so this is what I did and obviously it take took time a little bit of time to convert everything we have in this format okay so I'll be uploading this file probably you can use that and maybe if you want to try it all by yourself give it a try you definitely have this file to refer to so now let's run these commands and create our table so API cannot help you create a table until unless that API is specifically designed for that purpose what our API will allow us to do right now is to create sorry fetch data from those tables so let me just do it now quickly so we'll go to uh, right my yes my PHP admin and you see on the bottom down bottom left corner here we have a console so I can click on here increase the size of the console and paste create a table website.post so within the database website create a, a table called post with id as big int i have kept big int and null null as the default for id title to be text author to be text image to be text if we are actually specifying the url timestamp publishing date which I replaced with the timestamp of the current default timestamp and then accept with the text which changed and now my primary key is ID so much similar to this let's execute how do we execute this one control enter control enter okay success let's run another or maybe I can copy this all till here and paste I'm not sure okay paste it now and now press control enter We'll wait for some time for it to create all the tables that we need and it returned success let me just scroll down and see if do we have any error okay pretty much everything completed successfully we're good to go so let's click here and see so we have companies features feedback gallery menu pages plans posts users so everything is there in place now we want to populate data so for populating this data I will use the API directly so that would be a good demonstration to see how that API actually is working 
Okay, now uh, coming back to the API, here is the API. First thing to do, download the file, copy it in your root folder, your, brow, your uh, web server's root folder. In our case, it is HT Docs. Under that, I created a folder API. Within that folder, I copied the API.php file, this particular file, and now added this little configuration. So driver here, name, username is webadmin, that's the password. And I, I'll just keep it simple when I do the local development, feel free to do whatever you want. Database name, website, controllers. Now this is one such setting. By default, it is records. You don't have to add this line, but I wanted to show you one more thing called Open API. So Open API is an open standard of creating the APIs which interact with various applications online. So this standard, the latest version is three, OPI, Open API three, and this standard helps even machines. So it is, it makes it easy for you to read if you follow this standard human can easily read out what the API is all about. At the same time, we can use automated script programs, machines to read these APIs. That makes it much easier. Debug, I might uh, change it to true, but it's not necessary. We could have, we could change it to false too. But just after this change, let's see. Are we able to access this? So we'll go to our browser again. In the browser, I will go to local host. Okay, under local host, I have API folder. Yes, under API, I have. So after api.php, we type records, that's our controller. Plus, let's say I want things from post table. So I will type it like this and press enter. Let's see what does it show. It's an empty uh, table. So nothing is there. Similarly, let me check another. Let's check users. Do we have users? Yeah, that is also blank. So if I replace this records with open API, it will give you the definition, the entire definition of the API. See? This is what our API is capable of. This is the definition of this API, open API's definition. Okay. This does not show you any data. It is only specifying what all is possible, what all uh, methods can be utilized, what all uh, endpoints are. So it's an auto discovery like thing. It automatically discovers and show you. So just to show you in a bit clear manner, or maybe we'll do it later on. Let's get on to our work, the prime work of populating that API. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Now we will switch back to a tool called Postman. Okay, so what is this Postman? Postman is a very, very good tool. It's a tool that you can utilize to create APIs, to test those APIs before you write scripts about those API. So generally what happens is our web application would send these API requests to and fro and will fetch data from within the script. But at the time when we are preparing those APIs, we can use Postman to test to see how they're responding. So I have specified localhost PHP sorry, localhost api api.php records and pages. So we are going to populate this pages uh, table now. So everything is on default. There is no change in the setting. We'll see there are seven headers it is showing. Okay, my laptop is a bit slow. So just bear with me. So in headers, we have seven headers, which it adds automatically. You don't have to do anything here, but if you want to add, which we'll do in the time of authentication, we'll see how we'll utilize that. Okay. After that, there are different ways to populate this uh, data. We can have 
form data you can select form data and enter all the key value key value and description if you want to add if I click on bulk edit rows are prepared by new lines so you have can post like put everything in this format and see and the easy to follow format for us is called raw wherein we can select raw and select the type as JSON because our data is already in JSON format select this and then we should be good to populate this so let's go back go back to our code now this is the data let's say I want to populate and the restriction the limitation in this particular API that we are using is that this ID the unique identifier cannot be a string it either has to be a UUID or it has to be some number incremental number so we changed it in our definition to number so similarly for all other tables I've copied this data and you see we are using single code here in a properly formatted JSON document even ID for example has to be in double quotes and your value for that key also has to be in double quotes so we have to do this manipulation so after that uh, just to help us I have did that already so here are the standardized format and data so let's populate this pages first okay so I'm going, going to copy this entire array, copy, go back to our postman and under body I have selected raw and I'm going to paste here. Okay, if you see any error, anything underlined, any alert, just ensure that you, you're correcting that before you press send. So method type post we are because we are going to submit is the link pages is the table here's the data let's hit send and see if it is working okay still processing okay status 200 everything good so here is the status 200 let me see okay so it has written all the ideas it has created one two three four five six seven eight nine so similarly I'm going to now add the users so let's remove pages and type users change this to new and send this is also done next we have is features let's populate this also send I did face uh, some errors like data not matching data integrity errors and I was able to isolate the root cause that it happens because if you have a different type selected in your table structure but the type of data that you are posting is different for example if uh, I am posting string data for ID instead of a number then you would definitely get that error so let's going to let's populate gallery this is also done and after gallery we'll go to menus menus I actually wanted to uh, embed directly in the applications because there has to be something which we can load readily something that can be uh, uh, that is hard coded but because we already change it to something dynamic we will continue with what we know but uh, moving forward maybe we can look to have a static menu a bare minimum menu we can definitely add new things to that menu but bare minimum things should be there okay that menu is also getting populated let's go to posts okay 
okay let's see if everything is going to uh, database just a quick check okay we populated pages okay we have the pages there so things are working so look, let's go back and now I am going to put posts copy paste send companies copy Similarly, we'll populate the rest of the things. So, feedback. How many of you have, uh, I mean, have worked with WordPress or created uh, themes for WordPress. I every time wanted to learn that, but somehow I did just a few. I mean, not every time. Okay, so this is done. How many we are left with? Okay, just two. So we'll go to plans change this with plans submit websites websites okay copied paste and done so our database is populated let's check the last one website which we populated right now okay good so we are doing good we are done with our uh, database population and I we successfully configured our API now let's check this API how does it look like so I will mention record and select posts so see simple just after that you type that it will give you all the post articles let's say I just specifically want to see post number four simple as that and that's what exactly we wanted to do okay next let's check web gallery gallery Yes, we got all the images. One, yes, first image. So, and similarly, like we did here from the API, let's say I want to uh, modify. Okay, I want to modify, so I will use put. Okay, and I want to modify first uh, record and in websites. And let's change this uh, username. Okay, I make a, I'll make it administer. Administer. Okay. And we'll remove this because it's just one record. We don't need to have an error, array. And this one is enough. Okay. Okay. So no error. And now let's see. If it is working for us send yes done successfully let's see if now we see the administrator okay copy it and paste it here yes see now you see username is administrator it's changed so this is what we are going to use so our uh, 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 database is ready we just now to uh, wire our web applications again because we need to understand that it is not going to work directly now 
we need to tweak a little bit uh, both for authentication and both for fetching the data so we'll cover that cover that up in the next video wherein we are just going to do this wiring so let's do one thing all of us i suggest with your project come and reach up to this level do let me know if you find any difficulty and once everyone is there on this level we'll have that video and i want to have that uh, interactive session i don't know how to uh, trigger that how to do that live session but uh, i'll figure that out in case it doesn't work i'll still be, be posting that video i'm going to continue this recording now for the next video and stopping it here for all of us and just keep it specific to this now so thank you everyone keep liking keep sharing please join in me join me again in the next video and we'll complete this application yeah thank you so much have a nice time bye bye take care of yourself and do recommend this channel if it is helping you and if you like it and if you feel that it is helping you somewhere somehow so it's worth spreading please share it and do subscribe i see so many people go watch videos but do not subscribe so it's all up to you but if you feel like that's worth why not subscribe thank you so much yeah bye bye take care